or another. We've used a map to figure out where we are in Toronto, what direction we're trying to go in. If you've ever wanted to explore the city from a different perspective, though, now could actually be your chance. Tonight, a group of students at OCAD will unveil Toronto Bound, a living atlas. The exhibit, a collection of unique maps, ones that don't really rely on your typical landmarks. Vlad Rudikov is one of the students involved. He's here to explain what this living atlas actually looks like. Good morning. Hey, good morning. Typical map usually has streets, landmarks, pretty obvious what a map is. Pretty boring um, things. How is this different? This, what is a map, right? This is the question we thought about. Myself, 20 others, like you said. The All these ideas of traditional notions of mapping, we just blew them out of the water. What we created were just spectacular pieces of work. The whole idea of a map is just, uh, the idea of getting from A to B mm -hmm. is a story, it's a narrative. It's kind of uh, it's kind of already what exists in this world. I mean, you, you have a story to tell, I have a story to tell. So everyone else in the, in the world, in, the, in Toronto, has a story to tell. So they're like, we're all walking maps. So if you take those, if you say, you like blow those typical kind of things out of the water, when yeah. you're talking about a map, again, the streets, the landmarks, mm -hmm. the things that people use to orient themselves. Yeah, the very static things, that we just took all those apart and wanted to create something that's, that's living, that's, uh, that's dynamic, that's moving, that, a map that learns with us. Because, I mean, when you look at a map, it's this 2D thing that just sits on the table yeah. and, and it's boring. Our brains don't work that way. They're very patterned. And, and, and what we want to do is actually break this pattern. You saw it. So what does it look like? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, uh, yours, your part of this is is called lonely picnic. That's right. So what is that in in the context of this idea of mapping? it's it's playing on this idea that uh, we're all all maps, all of us, strangers, and that no matter no matter who you talk to, they're going to tell you something new. They're going to tell you a place to go. Sometimes it's not the right place, mm -hmm. but it'll take you somewhere. So it's this whole idea of like how would a map that gets you lost, like a map that gets you lost. In the, in the city. Rather than get you to where you need yeah, to go. Yeah, why not a map of... You know. So what's the Lonely Picnic? Lonely Picnic? It's this map that, uh, it doesn't look like a map. It actually comes in a tin box. Mm -hmm. It's, uh, you play it. Basically, you can play it by yourself or with, uh, with friends. It's, it's a place, all the places in the city, top 11 places where you can go and actually get lost in the city and uh, get away from the noise. I guess sometimes people call it people pollution, but the city can get, it can get to people sometimes, and it's a place to go and actually just escape all that. What was it that got you thinking about this? I mean, again, people are often just trying to get from A to Z, um, and it busy and mm. around. What is it about that idea of getting lost that that? Turned well, out? I mean, it's it's exciting. Like it's, you know, since we're kids, like we don't, this world's so new to us, and we're just we grow up slowly and we get a little dumbed down, and eventually we just. Uh, it's good. You gotta always keep life exciting. It's important. How do you do that? How do you, in your own life, walk, uh, run, take a bike, like move those things that you always moved as a kid? Like it's you gotta keep everything alive in your body, your head, your brain. Like you have the tin box in front of you. Yeah. What are some of the things that are in the box that would help me um, break that cycle and and just get myself lost? Okay. In well, uh, the first thing you do when you open it up is there's, there's instructions there, and then I have a little remember. And it reminds you to talk to strangers and that sharing is caring, mm -hmm. no matter what anybody says. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, you're given basically all these uh, all these photos and, and a magnifying glass. And a magnifying glass and even some wildflower seeds. So when you find the spots, you can maybe plant some seeds. And hopefully in the future, when enough people do this, they're just you're gonna be able to see a whole bunch of wildflowers. What are the photos? Can I see one of them? Yeah. So this is a photo of. I mean, there's green space in the middle of, I can use the magnifying glass, yeah, green yeah. space <laughs> in the middle of uh, downtown office towers. Where is this? What am I looking at? Oh, exactly. It's it's architecture, too. It's it's around us as well. I mean, you would have to go and, do you have any idea where it is? No, it looks like it's right downtown, but mm -hmm. again, there's the green space that kind of is the juxtaposition yeah, yeah. between uh, the big concrete towers and the big office towers. Mm -hmm. So I have to try and find I'll, I'll give you. I'll give you a hint. Uh -huh. It's it, upstairs. It's still, up, it's still outside, but it's upstairs. So it's like some of these urban roof or something like that. City mm. Hall, maybe, or... Yeah. So I'd have to try and figure out where this is and then make my way there. Basically, yeah. So you go and talk to people on the street and, you know... That's so interesting. Yeah. I, I, what happens when you get lost? For the average person who's going to do this, who, who again, is busy in their own life and trying to zip around, what's going to happen when they get lost? You get lost. 
Well, if they turn off their phone, maybe it would be a little interesting. Uh, what do you do when you get lost? I mean, <laughs> you try and figure out your way out. Yeah, yeah, we, we talk to people. Like, sometimes we just come to that point where we want to see the first friendly person on the street and just, you know, hey, like, can, you, can you help me out? <laughs> For whatever. Where will people be able to find this tin box if they wanted to get themselves lost? Where could they get a hold of it? Ah, uh, there's a lonelypicnic.com. You could just go and check it out and email me. I mean, email the, the monkey because that's the little character I took to all these places uh -huh. and I set him up there. So just the, this whole thing about getting in touch with your kid self and forgetting all the seriousness of the world. We'll send people to the website. Thank you for it. Yeah. And uh, the, everyone should just check out the work for when Rich and West. Okay. Yeah, it's a spectacular work there. Vlad, thank you. Thank you. Vlad Rudikoff is a student at OCAD. Starting tonight, his work and that of his classmates on display at Urban Space Gallery at 401 Richmond West. The exhibit called Toronto Bound, A Living Atlas. We'll put up a link to his website on ours at cbc.ca slash Metro Morning. Interesting to try and slow yourself down in a busy city like ours. Uh, Jill's here to tell you all of the busy things that are going on in this city. Well, the echoes of the election...